do you need a power meter? Now, although they are coming down in price, they still do represent a pretty serious investment. So here are six good reasons why we think you should seriously consider investing your hard earned cash. First up, having a power meter is going to lead to huge gains in fitness. Hold on a second, Dan. You can't just plonk one on your bike and expect to do that. You need to learn how to train with one, analyze the data, and then use that data to form a personalized training plan. That is true. But if you do do all of that, I stick to my original statement and I will give a personal example to back this up. I got my first power meter at the age of 23. At that point, I'd been a full-time rider for four years and I've been racing for over 10. Nevertheless, within the first 12 months of using one and training with it properly, I made a 10% improvement in FTP, which is pretty big. Secondly, power meters make segment times completely irrelevant. You can set a new PB by power instead of by time. Well, hold on a minute, Dan. You need to make sure that you keep aerodynamics and weight the same because even if you see a 10 watt improvement in your power, it's not gonna mean much if at the same time, you're gonna be 10 kilograms heavier. That is very true. But if you do keep all of those other factors the same, a power meter is going to let you see the bigger picture. So for example, if you were slower, on a particular part of your ride, but your power was higher, you'll know there was good reason for it. It might be that you had a slight headwind, or it might be that the air pressure was higher. Whatever the reason, you can be satisfied, but although you were slower, it was a better physiological performance. Because power is absolute. That's true. Speaking of which, a power meter it's a great tool to help you mentally deal with those types of conditions. Because I don't know about you, Matt, but I hate a headwind. In fact, when I was a lot younger, I actually cried into a headwind because it forced me below my average speed goal for the ride of 20 miles per hour. Well, I used to hate headwinds, Dan, and I still do. But the good thing about power meters, they allow you to keep a really good, even tempo. And like our last point, not worry about the speed that that power produces. In fact, I use headwind sections to help me climb. Next up, a power meter will allow you to go faster even without getting any fitter. Hold on a minute, Dan. Really? Yes, really, Matt. Through pacing. So, a power meter will enable you to ensure that you don't go into the red at the start of your event and pay for it at the finish. Through testing in training, you're going to know what you've got in the tank and therefore empty your tank at your event at exactly the right time. Whether that's 24 minutes or 24 hours. Power meters give you a reference, allowing you to compare yourself with yourself, which is really important if you're looking to make performance improvements. Now, you may be thinking that you've got a local test climb that allows you to do exactly that. But the beauty of a power meter is that it allows you to compare an effort on unknown roads with the efforts that you do at home. It will also allow you to create a power profile. That will show you what your strengths and weaknesses are, and you'll even be able to compare your efforts with those of the pros. A watt is a watt, no matter where in the world you may be, and no matter what the weather. In the words of Dr. Andy Coggan, one of the pioneers of training with a power meter, testing is training and training is testing. And a power meter allows you to do your testing out on the open road without the need to head to a laboratory. They're a great tool to track your progress and see if your training is leading to improvements. And in conjunction with your heart rate, you'll also be able to see if you're making efficiency improvements. You can test your sprint, your ability on short climbs, on mountains and in time trials, etc. What we would like to know are your experiences of training and racing with a power meter, both good and bad. You can leave them in the comments section down below. On the other hand, if you don't have a power meter and you also have no intention of ever buying one, please let us know why in the comments section just down below. And if you haven't already subscribed to GCN, your one-stop shop for all things cycling, click on the globe. Now, for how to test for your FTP, click just down here 
and for how to pace yourself from individual time trial, click just down here. And don't forget to like and share this video too. Cheers, lads.